Welcome back to another lesson on surface area. This time it's with triangular prisms. So Henry and Quinn were asked to find the area of a rectangle and a triangle with the dimensions shown below. Henry says that they will have the same area because they have the same base and height. Quinn disagrees. Explain who is correct and justify your solution. Well, as you probably know, those of you that remember at least, um, to find the rectangle's area, we would take area equals base times height or length times width, and we would substitute 11 and 12 and multiply those two together, and you would come out with an area there of 132 feet squared. Whereas with the area of a triangle, the formula is a little bit different. It's one half the area of the um, of a rectangle, so it's one half times base times height. Or a lot of students like to write it a little bit differently and say, take area equals base times height divided by two. Okay, multiplying by one half is the same as splitting something in in, in two, because when you split something or divide by two, you're cutting it in half, aren't you? So you're multiplying something by one half or dividing it by two. So what do we do? We still take 11 and 12, but we multiply that and get the 132 and take 132 divided by two. Oops divided by 2. So will it be the same area for both shapes? No. So here's what we're going to write next to here. Quinn is correct. They will not have the same area as each other. They have the same dimensions, but the formula for the area of the triangle is area equals 1 half times the base times the height, or base times height divided by 2. Um, the area of a triangle, any triangle's area is half the area of um, a rectangle with those same dimensions. And um, it would take basically one right side up triangle next door to one um, upside down triangle to kind of come out with a rectangular or a parallelogram type of shape. So let's take a few more notes here down below about triangular prisms. A triangular prism is composed of the following faces. Every triangular prism that we see, every 3D shape called a triangular prism will have a compo uh, be composed of rectangles and triangles. It will have three rectangular faces that connect the two triangle bases. Two triangular bases are going to be parallel and congruent, meaning equal measure, matching triangles. Remember the bases of a 3D object do not touch. So the two things that are triangles are considered to be the bases in a triangular prism. Very important to remember. How do you know which things are the base in a 3D shape? It's two equivalent pieces that will not be touching one another. All right, so now we're going to use these pictures here, these drawings of the triangular prism, and label the net and then calculate the area of all five faces. So notice there's no more six faces like with rectangles. There's only going to be five faces here with a triangular prism. All right. So remember also, we need the height of the rectangle, or the triangle, the height of the triangle here. We don't need a slanted height. We need a height that goes at a right angle to the base. So see where they're pointing to this four centimeters here? That's the height that's perpendicular to the base, and that's the height of the triangle. It's here, and it's in this triangle piece here. Four centimeters. What is the base of that triangle? Well, I don't see a measure given way in the back, but if you ran a straight edge or pencil parallel to that, 
you'd notice in the front a piece that's going the same way with the six centimeters listed there. So in the back, it's the same measure, six centimeters. So this base piece here is six centimeters. And it's over there as well. <clears throat> so letter D and E are your triangles. They're the bases. They will match. How do you find area of that? You take the six times the four, which is 24, and divide by two, which equals 12. So the area of each triangle separately is your six times four, which is 24, and then divide by two, or multiply by 0.5, one half. And you'll get 12 for each one separately. Those are a set of twins. Okay, next, we need the other three parts, those three rectangles. Now, note, sometimes the rectangles will be matching, and sometimes they will not match. It depends upon the triangle. If you have an equilateral triangle, you'll have all equal rectangles. If you have an isosceles triangle where two sides match, you'll have two matching rectangles. If you have a um, scalene triangle where no sides are the same on the triangle, then none of your rectangles will match each other. So let's see what we've got here with our measures. I'm going to re-highlight here. Um, let's grab a pink pen, and I see the rectangle along the bottom here. I'm just going to highlight this for a second. The one along the bottom is letter B. Oops. And with the dimensions that I see along there are 9 and 6. So I'm going to say letter B is 9 times 6. Now, that's a rectangle, so you're just taking the base times height or length times width, and 9 times 6 is 54 centimeters squared. All right, then um, let's see. Off to this side here in yellow, I'm highlighting right now. I see another rectangle. It looks like it's 9. And the slanted side, I don't see a measure here or here, but I believe it's supposed to be 5. So 9 times 5. So I'm going to call this one letter C. And I'm thinking it's here, it's 9. And then the other dimension is the 5. And 9 times 5 is 45 centimeters squared. And then what about the um, letter A? I'm sorry, letter, yeah, letter A. Letter A, it looks like we'll also have the dimensions of 9 times 5. Let me just get a different pen color here and highlight in purple. I've got this face all the way over that's kind of in the background but on the left over here. And I've got five going along this side. Nothing written on the other edge, top or bottom of it, but if I run that parallel I see it matches that nine that's way down at the bottom if I run a pencil parallel to there. Okay, so that one is five times nine or nine times five as well. 45 centimeters squared. So this must have been what type of a triangle if letters A and C seem to be matching where they're 9 times 5 or 45 centimeters squared. Looks like there's two matching rectangles out of the three. So this must have been an isosceles triangle where each side on the slant measured five centimeters. All right, what do I do to get total surface area? Total surface area, I've got to add up all the areas of all the surfaces. 
And when we add them up, get out your calculators, 45, oops, plus 54, plus 45, plus 12, plus 12, you get 168. So total surface area is 168 centimeters squared. All right, let's do some more practice. Get better and better the more you practice. All right. Um, okay. What we're going to do here, we've got two shapes going on here. We've got triangles and rectangles, right? Okay, first of all, I see the triangle shape. Oops. All right, triangles um, are area equals base times height divided by two. And if um, you've got two matching triangles, right, um, each with a base of six times a height of 5.2, which is 31.2, divided by 2 is 15.6. Okay, so if we take the base of the triangle 6 times the height, so I'm going to say times 5.2 divided by 2, and so the area there was 15.6 inches squared. Now remember you've got two triangles so you're going to have to double that. Two triangles. So you're going to have to either add it twice or multiply by two. The other shape are rectangles. And the area formula for a rectangle is base times height. All right, and here we've got a rectangle, looks like. Oh, did you notice that the triangle's measures all look like they're six inches on all the slanted sides and the base? So all three rectangles are going to be 8 time, 8.5 times 6. So Area equals 8.5, or well, 6 times 8.5, doesn't really matter which we multiply which way. And those are going to come out to area equals 51 inches squared. And then there's three identical rectangles, so triplets, I guess identical triplets. Hey, I know a set of girls that are identical triplets. They're two years old now. All right, so 51 times 3. All right, so 51 times 3 is going to give us 153. And if I go back to the 15.6 times 2 over here, two triangles, 15.6 times 2. I get 31.2. So the total surface area, I was supposed to not write on that space there, but I did. Total surface area would be the 31.2 plus the 153, which we get 184 point two inches squared. All right, and again, notice that the triangles, the triangle part had six inches on each slanted side and six inches at the base. So it was equilateral. 
equilateral triangle. So all three rectangles will match. They'll be identical. All right, the next one. Shade the bases and find the lateral in total surface area. So lateral, okay, the bases, we're gonna shade the bases. Shade the bases. So here's the base. Here's the base. So we are not including the bases when we do lateral surface area. So that means we need three rectangles. So only three rectangles. And let's see, the rectangles are going to measure twelve times five, twelve and five, and then in the middle, we've got twelve. And we've got 6. So in the middle, 12 times 6 is 72. In the other two, we've got 12 times 5, which is 60. All right, so the lateral surface area is 60 plus 60 plus 72. And that's 192 feet squared. Okay. The total surface area, we have to then go back and now include two triangles. So the area of each triangle. is 92. The base, which was 6, times the height, which was 4, and divide by 2. So the area of the triangles would be 12. And there's two of them. Which is 24. So add 12 plus 12 then you get 192 plus that 24, so that's going to be 216 feet squared. 216 feet squared. All right. Next up, we've got another um, type of triangular prism. The shape looks a little funny. The, the net looks a little different here on this one. No worries, I still have two triangles. Looks like a right triangle on each side with that little corner marking there. The little square in the corner means it's a 90 degree angle down there. 
So those triangles, if we don't include those two triangles for a moment, and get the lateral surface area. So we have the rectangle here. Looks like a nine by five, which is 45. centimeters squared and then this one in the middle looks like 4 times 9 which is 36 centimeters squared and then this bottom one we've got 9 into 3 is 27 centimeters squared. Since all the um, the triangle was um, scalene, scalene triangle, since there was no side lengths the same, that means so no rectangles. Are matching. All right, so we've got 45 plus 36 plus 27 equals 45 plus 36 plus 27 equals 108. So 108 centimeters squared for lateral surface area. How do we find the area of the triangles? The triangle base times height divided by 2. So you've got 4 times, or 3 times 4, divided by 2, which is 6. So we're going to take the 108 plus 6, plus another 6 for the other triangle. So 108 plus 6 plus 6 is 120 centimeters squared. All right. So find the area of one triangle, base times height divided by two, and then know that you have to have two triangles added on there. All right, a couple more real world examples. A carpenter is building a unique jewelry box in the shape of a right triangular prism with the dimensions shown below. How much wood will it take to complete the project? All right. Let's see, we've got our triangle pieces here. Okay, and I have to use where the two right angles are, so I need the three and the four. So, two triangles equals the base times height divided by two. And then times it by two, because there's two of them. So 3 times 4 divided by 2 is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. And then there's two of them, so we need 12 for the triangles, 12 inches squared for both triangles. What do I need for the rectangle pieces? Rectangle 1. Let's just say it's this one back here. Looks like it's 3 times 2. Six inches squared. Um, let's see. We're going to do which other rectangle? The rectangle right in the front here.
rectangle 2 has dimensions of a 2 and a 5, so 2 times 5 is 10 inches squared. And then we've got the rectangle way in the back, which I'll highlight in purple, way back here. We've got a 4. I don't see anything written here, but it looks like 2 if I go across to the other 2. So 4 times 2 for rectangle 3, 4 times 2, which is 8 inches squared. Okay, so we've got 2, oh, wait a second, let me just write this, 2 triangles and 3 rectangles. Okay, so we've got triangle they were each six inches squared and there was two of them so it's 12 inches squared. If you add them all up your total surface area total surface area equals 6 plus 10 plus 8 plus 12 is 36 inches squared. So the answer to number 4 is 36 inches squared. Alright, coming up in number 5, the chocolate candy bar or chocolate candy below is being wrapped in a cardboard box. How many square centimeters are needed for the box? So we've got our triangles. We want the, the height of three. Don't ever do a slanted height. And a base of 2.2. .2. So your triangle, base times height divided by two. So it's 2.2 .2 times three divided by two. 2.2 .2 times 3 is 6.6. .6. Divide that by 2 is 3.3. Okay, and you need that same, there's triangle 1, you need triangle 2, and then you're going to need 3 rectangles. So let's go back and erase some of this mess that I've made on my picture. So if you're working in pencil, it's a good deal, good thing to do. Okay, now I'm going to start looking at my rectangles. I've got 16 and 2.2. .2. So rectangle 1, 16 times 2.2 .2 equals 35.2. All right, the next one, back here, rectangle 2, looks like it's 16 times 3.2. So in your calculator, 16 times 3.2 is 51.2. And the last one is this rectangle off to this side, kind of to the front-ish right side. Looks like it's 3.2 by 16. 16 times 3.2. Two of them match. Did you notice that? The one I wrote in red and this last one here in blue, those are matching. Why are they matching? Because I could see the slant sides of the triangle are actually both 3.2. Way in the back it says 3.2 on the right. That means it's also over here in the front of the picture. And then 3.2 is circled in red on the left. Um, so 
two of the sides are the same. The base was 2.2, but each side, slanted side, was the same. So it's an isosceles triangle, which means then two of the rectangles will be matchy-matchy. What is my total surface area? I've got to add up all those faces, those five faces, three rectangles, two triangles. So going back to the triangles, they were each 3.3, so I had 3.3 plus 3.3, and then the rectangle one was 35.2, and the other two add those, 51.2 plus 51.2. You should come out with 144.2. And to label the answer would be centimeters squared. Area and surface area is centimeters to the second power. All right, getting there, guys. Our last problem of the lesson is the total surface area of the triangular prism below is 408 centimeters squared. That's funny. They told us the total surface area. Is means equal, right? What is the missing side length of the rectangle? Oh my, that's a tough one. Okay, so this missing side length of the rectangle. Well, okay, so if I take the total, can I at least subtract off some other parts? So the total is 408 centimeters squared. Let's minus the two triangle areas. So we're going to try and subtract out the area of the two triangles. So the triangle, let's look at one of them. It looks like 6 times 8, or 8 times 6 divided by 2. So 48 divided by 2. is 24 so each triangle is 24 centimeters squared so I'm going to subtract those off and then I'm going to minus out the two two of the rectangles uh, let's see, which one can I focus in on first? Can I get the measure here? This measure here. Yeah, that looks like this will be 6 on this side and 15. So rectangle 1, 6 times 15 is 90. So I'm going to take away 90 centimeters squared there. Let's try another one. This rectangle here has no mysteries. It's 8 going this way and 15 going this way. Eight times 15, 15 times 8 is 120. So I'm going to take off 120 centimeters squared for rectangle 2. All right, that leaves me with rectangle 3 with that mystery piece. So let's take 408 in our calculator minus 24 for each of the two triangles. So take away 24 twice. Take away 90 for rectangle 1. Take away 120 for rectangle 2. And we get... Um, 150 centimeters squared for the area of rectangle 3. Okay, the area of rectangle 3 is 150 centimeters squared. Oh, okay, so cool. I know this last rectangle 3 has 15 and x. So 
it's equal to 15 times x. So if I divide both sides by 15, I get 10 for x. And that answer is 10 centimeters. What is the missing side length of the rectangle? 10 centimeters. Final answer. All right, sometimes I got to work a little backwards. Don't panic when you're given a weird problem. Try and work it out to some way. How would I solve for a missing piece? You're going to have to always work backwards. So thanks so much for joining me, guys. We'll get more practice in class on this. Um, so let's um, get the job done. And with your help, um, you'll get better at this. Trust me, it just takes a lot more practice. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.